Just wave hands of adoration to Jesus. Wave hands of worship to Jesus. Wave hands of honor to Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, King of Kings. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the man without a country, but he's called the King of Kings. Hallelujah. To the lonely, he is a friend who sticks more closely than a brother or a sister. In times of war, he is our peace. In times of chaos, he brings orderliness. To every crisis, he brings solution. In times of discouragement, he brings hope. In times of loneliness, he is our comforter. In our poverty, he is our riches in glory. In our weakness, he provides strength. To those who are mourning, he brings laughter. To those who are ignorant, he brings knowledge. Oh, when people have lied against you, when people have spit upon you, when you have been misused and abused, when snares have been placed in your way, when stumbling blocks are lying before you, when they steal from you, he is your supplier. He will be your daily bread. He is the unsearchable riches of God. When you are sad, he will bring good tidings of joy. In our times of darkness, he is the light. When you need good advice, he is our counselor. To the sick, he is our doctor. When you are on the mountain top, he is the bright and morning star. When you are in the valley, he is the lily of the valley. When you are motherless, he will be your mother. When you are fatherless, he will be your father. He will always rise up on your behalf. When friends walk out through the door, he walks in through the door. When people give up on you, he takes you up. When people trample upon you, he raises you up. And he seats you in heavenly places. He is your savior. Somebody say thank you to him. He is your master. Somebody worship him. He is our glory and our righteousness. Somebody adore him. Somebody bless him. Somebody worship him. He is our beauty. Even though weeping may last through the night, he will bring you joy in the morning. Somebody give him praise. When people ridicule you, when people mock you, when people tell stories behind your back and they call you all kinds of names, he will hide you in the palm of his hand and no harm will touch you because you are his father's gift to him and you are dear to him. He loves you with an everlasting love. He stretched out his hands on the cross and he took your place. 
Somebody say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. We praise you Lord. Forever you are God. And we honor you. We will always honor you. Because there is no one else beside you. Oh, who is like unto you? Who can compare with you? You are our bridegroom, the suffering servant. Oh, when we are crying, you weep with us. Who can compare with you? You are our burden bearer. Oh, when we find ourselves in hot fire, you are there as a fort man in the fire. You do not run away from the fire. You run into the fire with us. Who can compare with you? You are the cloud of glory. You go ahead of us through the Red Sea. You do not push us into the sea. You go ahead of us and you say, follow me. Who can compare with you? You are the pillar of fire. You don't sleep. By night you are watching over us. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you. Forever and ever. Come on, if you believe it, shout it louder. Amen. Come on, give a clap offering of praise to the Lord, to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a night. Okay, somebody raise up your Bible and pray with me. Say, this is the word of God. This is the sword of the Spirit. I believe what it says of God. I stand on His promises. I live by its instructions. The entrance of God's word brings light and understanding as this word goes forth now may it find a home in my heart in my family to the glory of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and the church says now turn your bible to psalm 68 Psalm 68 Psalm 68 How many put on here? If you see it, shout a loud hallelujah Psalm 68 from verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. 
But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Oh. One translation says, But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. May you be joyful in Jesus' name. May you be happy in Jesus' name. May every power of the enemy around you perish in the name of Jesus. Let God arise in your life. Let God arise in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout a louder Amen. I want to share this with you tonight. But I want you to hear it very, very carefully. How many people here want to hear this word of God? If you want to hear it, stand on your feet. If you don't want to hear, sit down. If you want to hear, stand on your feet. And if you want to hear, you can take three steps, either forward or sideways. Either forward or sideways. Amen. Do you know that there are different powers operating in the world? There are different powers operating in, in the world. Some powers are from the pit of darkness. We call them demonic powers. Powers from the pit of darkness. Call them demonic powers. We hear of such powers a lot these days. Because when you look around the world, you see a lot of demonic activity going on. Lots of demonic activities going on. When I was in the U.S., one of my priest friend, one reverend father, old man, he's about 80 years now, took me to go and pray with his, with his cousin, young lady, graduate, working in a very good job. Then the mother died. And she became depressed. In the process of the depression, we don't know what happened. A demon entered into her. And she became so filled with fear that she cannot even open her door to go outside to buy something in the store. She could not go to work anymore. So she resigned from her job. A friend of hers came to live with her. She's the one who goes to the store to buy things. This lady needs the open door to go outside. She stays indoors. So the priest told me, we were going for a prayer meeting that evening. He said, let's get to my cousin's place so that you pray. We pray with her. He said, I want to go pray with my cousin. Let's go and pray with her. So when we got there, he told me, he said, Father Anthony, I want you to share the word of God with her. Then I will do the prayers. And my Bible was in the car. So I went and got my Bible from the car. And I was sharing from Mark chapter 11. When Jesus said, if anyone will say to this mountain, 
be moved from here and throw yourself in the sea. And believe that whatever he says will come to pass. He will surely receive whatever he says. I started sharing with her. And immediately after a while, she started saying, They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Immediately she started saying, They are coming. Her voice started changing. Her voice started changing. Started growing like the voice of a man. Changed from the voice of man, became the voice of an old man. The demon started speaking through her. Immediately, I started praying in tongues. Because I did not know what, who the demon was. I didn't know how it got into her. And I didn't want this demon to confuse me. So I started praying in tongues right away. Because the demon was already beginning to challenge us for being there. As I was praying in tongues, the demon became confused. And the priest said, Father Anthony, keep praying, keep praying. As I was praying, he was standing behind me. He was praying. He was ministering the Holy Spirit upon me. And I was confronting the demon. Then after a while, I told the demon, I said, whatever is your manifestation inside her body, I command you now to come out. She became still. No movement anymore. All of a sudden, her stomach started moving. Moving, moving. You could see the stomach moving under her dress. Moving as if a baby was moving inside her tummy. Things started coming from the stomach. Came to her chest. You can see it was like a big ball in her chest. This lady started screaming, holding her chest. The thing kept moving. It's rebuking it. Come out. By the power in the name of Jesus, he came to her throat as if it was going to choke her. Her throat became so big. After a period of prayers, she started like she was going to throw up. The friend ran and brought towel and she threw up. Threw up congealed blood like a like the size of a long tennis ball and then she started vomiting blood we are packing blood with the towel they went and brought another towel brought another one kept packing blood we ministered to that young lady for close to three hours. And God delivered her. After some months. She went back to work. And then after some time. The Lord started using her. Today, she has a ministry in New York. Now the end, these powers knew that God had a plan for the life of this young lady. So they held her down. They locked her in the house. But what was keeping her in the house was not the key in the door. 
What was keeping her in the house was a power that was deposited inside her. These powers are wicked. They come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then there are some other powers that are from human beings. Human powers. There are other powers that human beings go to get from different sources so that they can overpower their fellow human being. Some people will go and get powers so that any person that comes to live in their compound, they exchange your destiny. As you are using your money to pay them rent, that money is being deposited on an evil altar and is used as a point of contact to siphon your financial destiny. There are wicked people, though. There are wicked people. Some of them, because of the covenants they have entered into to obtain that power, they have to make some kind of human sacrifice. It can be a sacrifice of mental illness. So when somebody packs into their compound, there is always a history of madness in that compound. In some compounds, every year, you see some people, they have about three, four houses. Compounds. Every year, somebody, one of their tenants must die. You see, but the problem is that a lot of believers, our eyes, they open, but we know they use and take see. Our ears open, but we know they use them. Take the waiting. Take care. Some people will even say, I beg that can't you not believe them. Whether you believe, say, sun do, or you believe, say, sun no do, you're not going to stop the sun from shining. No? Your belief has nothing to do with the reality of the sun. If you like, say, you not believe in sun, the sun is shining on the go. If you like, make you say, I not believe in those powers. They are operating their own. And sometimes they are even operating against you. And they like it when you don't know them. They like it that way. They like it when you say, I don't believe they exist. Uh -huh. So when they sit down for your pile of self, they chop your food. You, you don't do anything about it. Because you say you don't believe. There are some believers, demons are sitting in their parlor, eating their food. They will go to work, bring home the money, the demons will be there. As they bring the money, they come, demon, they collect the money, they spend them. Maybe you are here, you work so hard, but you know they know how your money to disappear. I want to provoke you. I want you to have righteous indignation, righteous anger, so that as you are coming to the close of this year, all these stories about these powers of witchcraft that they are tying somebody down somewhere or they are causing accident in these ember months, I want you to have righteous indignation. It will not be you who will have an accident. It's those powers that will meet an accident. I want you to have righteous indignation to the point where anybody that goes anywhere to collect any power because of you, that person
person will meet with an accident. Whatever power they have gone to collect, they now they know what they go inside and take to bed, not because of you. There is a family that comes here for vigils. If they were around, they would be here today, but they are not around. But they come here regularly for vigils. Some persons that they have helped in the past, they say, eh, the man not agree help us again. Eh, he has, but he doesn't want to help us. They went to somewhere in the West. Three of them went to somewhere in the West and told them, and they went and made a jam. And when they, were, when they were bringing it, they gave them certain instructions that they must not meet with a woman until they have used that thing to touch the man. When they were on their way, they called the man. <laughs> you there? And we just want to stop by and say hello. The man said he's home. They should come. As they were getting close, their car had problems. So they stopped to fix the car. And you know, say, if your car get problem around that or a area, if now one problem did the motor before, it can be multiplied suddenly to five. So their car had problem at Ore, and suddenly they started discovering all other problems. They stayed there till almost 7 p.m. By the time they were getting home, it was already late. So they said, okay, let's uh, do this thing tomorrow. So that very evening, when they, that night when they got home, one of them, the girlfriend called him and said, where you did since? Why you not they answer your phone? He said, eh, we went to somewhere for a meeting. Yeah, that, that, tell all the story when you get. The girl said, listen, why don't you just stop by in my place? Let's uh, have dinner together. Ah, the guy said, I tired. I said, come now. Told him so many sweet things. The man jumped at Amoto. He forgot what he was told. <laughs> Any instruction that powers have given to your enemy concerning you, they will not remember them. I said they will not remember them. He forgot the instruction. When he got there, after they had dinner, they had something else. The second one, when he got home, his wife made dinner for him, welcomed him, they ate, they slept. In the middle of the night, something happened. The third one, the wife was not home. Early the next morning when they woke up, he called his other friends, oh yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. One said, okay, call the man whether he's home. So they called him, they said, uh, eh, they went to church, uh, but after mass, he's going to visit somebody, so by this particular time, he will be home. So they started timing him, okay, by this time, he could not reach house. About one hour to the time, somebody knocked the third one door. One of his friends, when he don't see, don't tell. That one say, uh, he just he drive the past. Now he see motor for outside, so he just wanted to check whether he was home. Uh, he say in the house. Uh, so what did you just do? Uh, where your wife? He say wife travel. Uh, only you just the house like that. I say and I so uh, he started uh, playing at home. 
Smarter and the friends called him. So yeah, yeah, let's go. They drove to the house of the one who had the charm. The one when the girlfriend called him so. By the time they got there, get up, make with the go. The guy get up, he fall down for chair again. Get up now. What did they do you? His face begin bang on one side. He had stroke. Right away. As I'm talking to you now, two of them have died. It was the third one that made the confession. There are powers. But power they pass. I didn't hear you. So when you say as a child of God, when you say let God arise you are invoking power. You are invoking what? You are invoking power. The power that is above powers. The almighty power. When you open your mouth as a child of God and you say, let God arise. <laughs> the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, it's talking about Jesus. He said, he despoiled the principalities and the powers and he made a public spectacle of them leading them away in triumph by it. When you say he despoiled, to despoil something is to strip the thing naked. And when somebody naked for public, what did it be, it be that? You, are you hearing what the Bible says about Jesus? He says he despoiled principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle. To, to make such, a public spectacle is to make public disgrace. So he stripped these powers naked and publicly disgraced them. If somebody get that kind of power, you can't leave that power. They go find the one with the disgrace. That is what? Everybody say error. error. That is fundamental error. error. He spoiled them. He stripped them naked. This is like a soldier who goes to war and comes back eh, with captives. Captives. Capture them. Chain the king. Chain the soldiers. Chain all of them. They drag them. They come. People, when they make, when people, they fear before, when they, they tie a, a bullets, right? they don't strip, say, come naked, wear pant. Use ordinary leg, they walk out, they chain them, they carry them. They walk. That is what Jesus did. All these principalities and powers, he disgraced them. But he did not disgrace them for himself, he disgraced them for you. He stripped them naked for you. Because if these powers were able to, they will strip you naked. If they were able to, they will take away everything that God has planned for you in life. So in order to protect you, so that the enemy will not despoil you,
Jesus came down from heaven and the Bible says in 1st John chapter 3 for this reason the Son of Man was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil he dismantled the principalities he destroyed their organization he turned them upside down stripped them naked and made a public disgrace of them so that they will not disgrace you anymore but one problem that many believers have is that we are still afraid we are so full of fear of these powers we are afraid of these principalities these forces of evil we are so afraid of them as a person who sit down here when he stand near you or sit down near you are you afraid are you afraid Come on, somebody raise up your right hand and pray with me. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. You sent your, your son, Jesus, to dethrone, to, dethrone, to despoil principalities and powers. He overcame them so that I may live in victory. And you poured out your spirit upon me that I may no longer be afraid. So now, my father, I speak to the spirit of fear. You spirit of fear, release me in the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear, release my family get out of our lives in the name of Jesus that name is power in Luke chapter 10 from verse 17 to verse 19 the Bible says when the 72 came back they were rejoicing and they said to Jesus master even the demons they submit to us when we do what? When we use your name. And Jesus said, Yes, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he said, Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy and nothing will harm you i want to declare to you tonight any power that is not of god is a beggarly power you know beggar beggarly power and, and any person who goes to a beggarly power is wasting his or her time because beggarly powers are occult powers, witchcraft powers, secret society powers, sects like Amok, Grail, Lodge, White Garments, Herbalist, all those are beggarly powers. These powers we make initial gra gra. IGG initial gra gra when they come somewhere they will be making gra gra when they come with their charms you see them they will be making gra gra blow the teeth for air eh! they will make yeah, 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 yeah. then some people will be afraid but when you are, you have the spirit of God like Elijah did. Elijah will say, eh, it's not a matter of gra gra. Come, make your altar and I will make my altar. Choose 
your animal and I will choose my own. Put your own on the altar. I will put my own on my altar. Let the God that answers by fire. Let him be God indeed. He said, okay, since you people are so many, call on your own. Eh? Start calling on your God. They started calling on their God. Begali power. Begali power who oh, hear us. Begali power who oh, hear us. Begali power who oh, hear us. Amad you have power who oh, hear us. Alev Minyo power who oh, hear us. Ikbejuli power who oh, hear us. Aziza power who oh, hear us. Oneru power who oh, hear us. Somebody say, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I remember when my grand, great grandfather used to call them. Now, so they call them. Ekbejule power, oh, hear us. Now, one leg, they did they jump, oh, hear us. Now, one leg, with they use, oh, hear us. Nothing happened. Because they are beggarly. Then somebody else say, ah. Uh, 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 they use one lego but they also use knife to cut themselves so that the blood you know the, the, the gods they like blood where well, where well. they are blood sucking powers so let's cut ourselves so some people they dance with one leg so they cut themselves blood is flowing Elijah say call all the louder maybe they sleep they called from morning Tonight, nothing happened. And by evening time, Elijah said to the people, gather around me. The broken altar of God, they repaired it. Remember that message I preached some months ago? Altar versus altar. Altar, they pass altar. <laughs> Elijah said, help me to repair the altar of God. So they repaired the altar. After repairing the altar, he put the animal on it and he said, pour water on it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When God shows up in your life, he does not just show up. He shows off. You know when I say somebody, they show off. What do they mean? They may guy. When God shows up in your life, he go use your life to make guy. You not hear what you are talking. I say God go use your life to make guy. He go use you take shine. When God shows up, He shows up with power. Elijah said, "Pour water on it." Second time they did it. He said, "Do it the third time." They did it. Oh, I remember some years ago I went to preach at Awuchi. I know in those days, when you are younger, you take a lot of risks. Lot of risks. I was to preach an all night at Awuchi. And I had been ministering in my parish at Aragba in those days. I left Aragba around 6 p.m. to start driving down to Hauchi. Late. We got somewhere. We started looking for a filling station to buy fuel. And that time there was fuel scarcity. And you know how they adulterate fuel. We looked and looked and looked. Eventually we found one place they brought Jerry Khan, sold fuel to us, continued. As I was going, the car was started jerking seriously. We hear the carburetor make it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We were praying. Eventually, the car got us to where we were going. Immediately, we landed there. I called the parish priest, who was a friend of mine. I said, My dear, you know, immediately in the morning, I'm going to go back home. I need a mechanic to help me look at this car because it was behaving funny as we were coming. So the mechanic, they called the mechanic, 
by the grace of God, there were about two of them who were at the all night. They started walking on it right away. After they came to, to meet myself and the parish priest, and they were telling the parish priest something. The parish, I was wondering what they were talking about. Say, be like this motto, don't get serious problem here. So I told the priest, I said, wait till they talk, we'll go back and forth, back and forth. The, the priest said, Father, we want to show you something. So we got there, they had a bowl, and there was uh, water in the bowl. And you know, when you have water mixed with fuel, those say the fuel go to float on top of the water. So the thing did there, and they, were, they told me, say, Father, see what you did, drive your motor car. I said, no, the, the, where this one come from? They said, they, they sucked it out of the tank now. They said, you use water to drive your motor car. There was more water. The, 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 the fuel, it just be like me, you pour uh, 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 one uh, 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 teaspoon of oil on top of water. When God shows up in your life, he shows off. That is why as a child of God, you need not be afraid. Tell three people beside you, say, do not be afraid. The only power that cannot be conquered is the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it's the name above all names. He is exalted far and above every principality and every power and every name. Whether existing or non-existent. But believers, we've got to realize this. We are in a battle. Because Satan will not release the blessings that he has stolen easily. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan will not release the blessings he has stolen easily. Do you know the value of one soul? Jesus will die over and over and over again for only one soul. The devil knows the value of one soul. So when the devil captures one soul, he does not release it easy. There are some of you who are here, your children, your, your relatives have been captured by the devil. How do you think that person is going to be released? There is no victory without confrontation. There is no victory without a fight, without a battle. And let me tell you, my dear friends, these demonic powers, they are not playing games with anybody. They fight with the aim of destruction. If you are the kind of Christian who wants to give up fighting, and you want to surrender, they will gladly take you into captivity. How many people like to go into captivity? Huh? Error. We are in a terrible period of battle as Christians. Do you know how many Christians are being slaughtered every day? In Nigeria. In Borno State. Last Towards the end of last month, the leader, one of the leaders of the intercessory ministry in the charismatic renewal in the diocese in Bornust in Meduguri, came here to visit me. A lady. She was reminding me years ago when I went to preach in Mubi, a town in Bornu State. She came and she was telling us stories of what Boko Haram is doing. Believers, we don't hear anything here. 
the news will not carry these stories. She was telling us how husbands are being slaughtered in front of their wives. Many villages, there is nobody. Some, some believers have fled. They are not living on the, in the mountains. Living in caves. She ran here to say, you people pray for us. Pray for us, she said. There are many people today who are not taking this fight serious. If you are an African and you have been given an African name and some of us when we were growing up, they used razor blade to cut marks on your body. Some of all, they tied things around your neck, tied things in your hands, tied things around your waist, your ankles. You are already in a fight. You are already in a serious fight. Some of our grandparents and parents, they did things ignorantly. But those things are affecting us. And whether you fight or not, the devil has already declared war. If you don't fight, it will take you captive. The only way to free yourself is to fight. And this fight, nobody is going to win this fight by carrying placard and singing, Oh, we are saying, stop the killings. Boko Haram, not go hear that one. If you like, carry a placard and be singing, Oh, we are saying, stop the killings. They will kill you more. Oh, you, you carry a placard, you are singing to demons. Oh, we are saying, stop drinking blood. Go sing that one for witches and wizards. Carry a placard, say, Stop drinking blood. They will, they will tear the placard from your hand. Drink your blood. May they not drink your blood in Jesus' name. Yeah. The only way to overcome them is for believers to stand on the word of God. It's for believers to stand on the word of God. To cry ceaselessly and plead and say let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. It, this, this expression let God arise was not, it was not David that used it the first time. It was Moses. Right? In the book of Numbers chapter 10 verse 35 Whenever the ark of God was going out, whenever the Israelites get up and they carry the ark of God, Moses will say, Arise, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered, and may those who hate you flee before you. My dear friends, Moses knew that there were enemies in the path of the ark of God. Moses knew that there were enemies in front of the ark of God. There are enemies in front of you. There are enemies in front of the church today. There are enemies in front of Nigeria today. The church needs to start crying out like the people of old. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. The church is talking about new evangelization today. New evangelization, you are not going to be able to grab souls from the devil without fighting the devil for those souls. Because the devil is not going to sit down at table with you and say, okay, how many souls are we going to exchange? The only way to get the devil to give up the grounds that 
he has taken, to give up the communities that he has taken, to give up the villages, the families that he has taken, is to step up in the battle gear of righteousness, is to put on the whole armor of God and step up to this Goliath called Satan, step up to the Goliath of the demons of poverty and backwardness and frustration, working against the destiny of your family, is to say, let God arise. How many people want to make that prayer tonight? How many people want to make that prayer tonight? If you want to make that prayer, stand up and raise up your right hand. Stand up and raise up your right hand. Say, my father and my God, I surrender to you. Enroll me. Write my name among the warriors of righteousness that I may become one with Jesus to destroy principalities and powers to overtake the powers of the enemy to reclaim territories in the mighty name of Jesus for a soldier who is going into war you have to identify your enemy if you don't know your enemy face to face your enemy will kill you are you hearing what I'm saying? If you don't know the uniform when your enemy they wear, you go go enter center of your enemy. You not go no say that your enemy now you they in midst of. A believer has to recognize the enemies that you are fighting. There are many enemies out there, my dear friends. Don't take it for granted. Don't think that because things are going well for you now. Don't think that because your job is going well or things are going well with you financially. That is not the best though that you can afford. What you are experiencing now is nothing compared to what God wants you to have and what God wants you to experience. There are enemies along the way that need to be fought. And every day, a child of God needs to stand up to those enemies. Every day, you need to put on the bat, the armor of righteousness. Every day, you need to invoke the blood of the Lamb. Every day, you need to hold up the sword of the Spirit. Every day, you need to put on the helmet of righteousness. The helmet of the Word of God. You need to put on the battle shoes of righteousness and step into the arena that the enemy has taken. Every day parents need to lay their hands on their children and say let God arise in the life of this my child. Let God arise in my business. Let God arise in my office. Let God arise in my family. Let God arise in my community. I don't know where you live. Maybe the place where you live there are territorial demons that are sitting on the prosperity of believers it is time for you to go back home and when you get home to stand in front of your door and raise up your right hand and say let God arise in this neighborhood and any power that is against the power of God be consumed with Holy Ghost fire you need to start taking over your neighborhood you need to start taking over your yard you need to start taking over your house you need to start taking over your family when you get home this morning I want you to stand in the middle of your sitting room before you lay down and go to sleep I want you to stand in the center of your living room and raise your right hand and say let God arise in this family let God arise in this house and any power any beggarly power that is at work in this place without the authority of God be consumed with Holy Ghost. You need to get aggressive. Slap somebody high five and say, Get aggressive. Oh. Get aggressive in the spirit. If not, the enemy is going to walk all over you. If you are not aggressive, the devil will trample all over you. If you are not aggressive, he will take what rightfully belongs to you. 
But it is time. Everybody say it is time. It is time to take back what he has stolen from you. It is time to take back stolen ground. It is time to take back whatever you have lost. It is time to reclaim your possession. The Bible says on Mount Zion, the tribe of Judah shall possess her possession. There shall be healing on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance on Mount Zion. There shall be prosperity on Mount Zion. There shall be glory on Mount Zion. And my dear friend, the Bible Bible says wherever you step the soles of your feet I give to you as an inheritance when you get home this morning as you step into your house through the door and you stand in the middle of the living room you raise your right hand and you say let God arise let his enemies be scattered let all that hate him let them flee from this house let them flee on this family and as I step my feet on the soil of this compound I take over as an inheritance by the power of the living God I take over by faith I take over by faith I take over by the power and the blood of the Lamb it is take over time slap somebody high five say it is time to take over it is time to take over for too long Abba, how can you as a believer a child of God one demon sit down for your pal or they wait some people they here now some people they here now demons sit down for their pal or they wait say and they wait for her make she come back from all night and they wait for her make you come back from this all night when you go any blessing when he carry come, I go chop him. Hey, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I say, what are you going to do about it? Some of you are here now. Some of you are here now. One demon, the front of your shop, even as we they talk, he carry chair. Not be just a bench. Take cross front of your of your store. He turn down for there. Say, make you go pray. Come. No, no better customer go cross this place. Now come, 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 customer. Now go enter. What are you going to do about it? I say, what are you going to do about the child of God? When you get home, as you step your feet upon that place, you are going to say, let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let his enemies, let all that hate him, let them flee before him. Like chaff before the wind, blow them away. Like wax before the fire, just melt them. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let's go arise and the enemy be scattered. Let God arise and his enemy be scattered. Let's go, let's go arise. Let God Don't be like a soldier when they go fight and they tie the eye, they blindfold them. Some people are blindfolded and they are going to battle. Pray with me, say, My Father and my God, by the power in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual blindfold, every spirit of ignorance that is making me not to recognize the enemy be removed from me forever. Open my eyes, oh God, 
to recognize the enemy. Open my eyes, O oh God, to recognize the tricks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. You know, you, you cannot go to war with your eyes blindfolded. You have to remove the spiritual blindfolds. Some other people, some other believers, they are like crab army. You know crab. If you don't watch crabs before, if you see where crabs they for a side bucket, or they pack them put for somewhere, and you see one crab that is trying to climb out, as they climb, the other ones could they pull them down. That is the way some believers are. When they see a believer that is trying to get out of a situation, instead of helping the person to get out, they will put the person down. And there are some of you like that here. You keep struggling to get out of a situation, but there are people who are always pulling you back. Always pulling you down. Ha! Pray with me. Say, my father and my God. Arise in your power. And every crab power. Every beggarly power. Pulling me back. Pulling me down. Receive fire. Open your mouth and make that prayer now. Make that prayer. Make that prayer. Any power that is pulling you down. Try to pull you back into where you are coming out of. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. He already came out of the situation. Now they want to drag you back into it. No, 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 no. Backward never. Backward never. I am not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. Let the fire of God consume. May they be melted. Every power trying to pull me back, pull me down, be melted by Holy Ghost fire. Be melted by Holy Ghost fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray with me, say, my Father and my God. By the power and the blood of Jesus. I nullify tonight. Every satanic decree that has been issued against my life. Let God arise. Let every decree be consumed by fire. Let God arise. Let every satanic challenge in my life be consumed by fire. Let God arise. And every satanic plan, plans of failure, Plans of accident, plans of sickness, plans of death for me, for my family, be destroyed by fire. Let those plans backfire, backfire. Go back to your source, go back to your mentor, go back to whoever sent you. Open your mouth and make that prayer. Oh, make that prayer now. Make that prayer, make that prayer. Say, let God arise. Arise, my Father. Arise, my God. Arise. Arise in your power. Arise in your majesty. Arise in your glory. Let every satanic decree backfire. Let every satanic plan backfire. Every plan of accident backfire. Every plan of death backfire. Every plan of failure backfire. Every plan of poverty backfire. Every plan of disgrace backfire. Every plan of frustration backfire. Every plan of joblessness backfire. Every plan of lateness in marriage backfire. Every plan of childlessness backfire. Every plan of divorce backfire. Every plan of failure backfire.
in the mighty name of Jesus say my father and my God arise in your power and let every satanic agreement entered into against me every satanic conspiracy entered into against me whether in the heavenlies on the earth under the sea in the mountain in the valley in caves under trees on top of trees wherever that conspiracy was conspired let the fire of the holy ghost come down and devour open your mouth and make that prayer release the fire of the holy ghost now every satanic conspiracy against your life every satanic conspiracy wherever it was entered into whether in the river on the air on the land in the in the heavenlies in the occult realm in any secret court on any in any shrine on any demonic altar holy ghost fire holy ghost fire holy ghost fire upon that conspiracy holy ghost fire upon that conspiracy every conspiracy must die 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 wither by the fire of the holy ghost let god arise let god arise let god arise let his enemies be scattered every enemy of my foundation scatter every enemy of my family scatter every enemy of my life scatter every enemy of my vocation scatter every enemy scatter 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 by fire in the mighty name of jesus pray with me say let god arise and every satanic reinforcement rising up against me whether from the north or from the south from the east from the west be amputated by holy ghost fire be amputated by holy ghost fire every reinforcement open your mouth and make that prayer any reinforcement hey witchcraft reinforcement occult reinforcement marine reinforcement wherever the reinforcement is coming from be amputated be amputated we cut off your hands we cut off your legs we dismember you we rip you open we cut off your head hey david cut off the head of goliath every satanic reinforcement we cut off your head tonight 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 let God arise let God arise every satanic yoke be destroyed ancestral reinforcement destroyed by fire marine reinforcement amputated by fire In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray with me. Say, let God arise. Let the Eucharistic Jesus arise. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost arise. And speak on my behalf. In the name of Jesus. You know, this is the 10th month of the year. Remember the story when Moses sent out 12 spies, 10 came back with a negative report. Two came back with a positive report. 10 failed, ten, two passed. Oh, pray with me. Raise up your right hand and pray with me. Say, My Father and my God, in this month of October, arise on my behalf. 
I will not fail in any assignment that you have given me. My father, I refuse to be a failure in the name of Jesus. My father, there is no glory in failure. My father, in your assignment, give it to me here on earth. Arise on my behalf. Arise on my behalf. Scatter my enemies. Devour my enemies. That I may be successful. That I may not glorify the devil. But glorify your name. Open your mouth and make that prayer. Say my father make me successful. Make me successful in my assignments. Make me successful in my marriage. Make me successful in my education. Make me successful in my business. Make me successful in my family. Make me a success. A successful believer. I will not be a failure. Arise on my behalf, O oh God. And I will not be a failure. I will be successful. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 verse 20. That in all matters of wisdom. The king found Daniel. With the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Ten times wiser. Than all the astrologers. All the magicians. All the herbalists, they were ten times better. In this month of October, and in the rest of your life, as God rises on your behalf, you will be ten times more than any herbalist. You will be ten times more than any beggarly power. Ten times more than any occult power. Ten times more than any marine power. Ten times more than any witchcraft power. Ten times more than any secret court power. In the mighty name of Jesus. So let it be for you. So let it be for your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, shout seven loud, amen. Come on, somebody shout here. Yeah. Somebody shout, let God arise. Say, let God arise. Hallelujah. It's the tenth month of the year. So slap ten people high five. Say, let God arise for you. Let God arise for you. <laughs> 